When you buy a house, you can expect there to be some additional work you need to do to it. And sometimes that reveals small problems. In my case, I went to change the light fixture in the kitchen as it produced quite ugly, harsh shadows with its spotlights. And lurking underneath was a great big unnecessary hole. Fixing a new light with this hole would be tricky, so I decided to fill it in. I took the rough measurements of the hole and got a plank that would fit inside. Then I tried out a few different circular objects to find something that would be roughly the same size as the hole. The tapes were slightly off, but the vanish lid turned out to be just the right ticket. I don't know why it's even there, but the hole had originally been cut quite badly. So I wouldn't be able to cut a super accurate piece of wood to fill it, but that's okay, as you'll see later. I grabbed a saw, a jigsaw, and a scraper for later. I marked up my plank that would sit just above the ceiling, cut it to length, and I sanded it down. I don't actually have a proper workbench for sawing, so this is my impromptu workbench. Weighing down the MDF with dumbbells and kettlebells to keep it as stable as possible, with the additional weight of me, actually worked really well. I will get a proper workbench at some point, I promise. And there we go. The perfect hole filler. Good enough to eat, but probably don't. Except it didn't fit. Of course it didn't. A lot more sanding later and it seemed like it would work. I taped up the exposed wires with electrical tape to protect them and also turned off fuses for the light switches in the house whilst I was doing this just to be extra safe. I'm drilling a screw into the middle of the plank, as you'll see, it's so I've got something to grip onto whilst I'm attaching it to the ceiling. Then I threaded the wire through a hole passing through the MDF and the plank to keep it central. Please ignore the extra hole I made next to the previously large hole. Time to fill. I used Polyfiller Deep Gap Edition, but I'm sure other flavors would work just as well. I gave it a good mix and now, the fun part can begin. It applied really nicely, I just loaded up my scraper and slapped it all over the gaps. Once it was dry, I was able to sand it down and smooth it off. You really should be wearing a mask and goggles for this. I'll make sure to get some for next time. I slapped on a bit more polyfiller and called it a day. A little more weighting and a little more sanding and we have a pretty decent looking ceiling. Now the slightly less fun part begins, depending on how much you enjoy straining your arms. The polyfiller dries gray, so I got some Dulux matte white paint to cover it up. Except, when I painted just one area, it became apparent that the rest of the ceiling needed to be painted as well. I really hate painting ceilings. I don't know about you guys, but my god, it sucks. However, it must be done, so I did it. Then I literally waited for paint to dry, and we were all set. Fresh new ceiling ready to install my new light. I screwed in the bracket and then took a little look at the electrics. I haven't done a whole lot of electrics before in my life, but I can tell you red goes into brown and black goes into blue. The most important thing to know. So important that I wrote it on my hand, just so I didn't forget, because you really don't want to forget that part. I wired it all up, attached the rest of the fixture to the bracket, bulbs in one by one, and hey presto, we're done here. One new light. 